Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da Habita Billah a question was asked Assalamu alaikum akhi Can you answer this question? I'm a young brother in my 20s and I struggle to keep my gaze lowered because of where I live in Europe There are a lot of women that are clothed but naked Alhamdulillah I haven't committed zina when I had many opportunities but anyways how can I, as a young male, keep patient to have halal intercourse? And how should I approach to speak to a sister? How should I approach? Uh, and is it permissible to chat or text uh, women just to get to know them? First and foremost, habitafillah, that, of course, this is a common uh, struggle, especially for the youth, but not just for the youth. For older people as well, that the the shahwa, but however for the youth, because generally their desires, in general, are greater. That is a time in life when they are challenged, usually, more so. And with that being the case, no doubt our youth are bombarded by m many various stimuluses or stimulus uh, and distractions and the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned He mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the first fitna or trial that befell the children of Israel was the women so that is something that affected the nations before us and will affect the nations after us the fitna to Nisa for the men and likewise for the women as they have shahwa as well so this struggle is a common struggle with that being the case how to have patience the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a hadith, he said, Ya ma'ashir al-shabab, faman istata'a minkum alba'a fal yatazawaj. He addressed the youth. He said, O youth, whoever from amongst you is able to marry, then he should marry. And then he mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if they're unable to marry, they don't have the ba'a, and the ulama differ over this, and we've talked about this hadith, and explained it in detail in Baluga Maram. But the scholars, they mention about al ba'a, some of them interpret it to mean the financial means. And some of them interpreted to mean the physical or sexual means the means to be able to have that that strength and that prowess and if one is unable to financially of course to afford to marry then as the prophet sallallahu said that they should fast and that fasting is a means to weaken the desires. So that is the prophetic prescription and is the best prescription. However, we know that we are bombarded with extra stimulus that did not exist to this extent, to the extent that it did in the Prophet Sallallahu time, that we are tested now with uh, nakedness beyond imagination and stimulus wicked stimulus beyond imagination that what the fitna that we face in our homes for example that in any device you can find the most evil of evil or you can find the greatest of good and that's simply by typing or even through voice recognition on your devices so that requires taqwa Allah it requires being vigilant in safeguarding oneself from that extra stimulus. So the one who indulges, for example, they watch movies 
And I'm not even talking about the one who goes to the extent of pornography, but just watching the movies and watching other things, that they're going to see uh, much muharramat, a lot of muharramat in any, doesn't matter where you are, probably if you, if you're watching TV in Afghanistan, it doesn't matter that you'll see this. You'll see uh, that, and definitely in Saudi Arabia and everywhere. So, with that being the case, it requires fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and limiting one's stimulus. Because the more you view those things which entice you, the more you're going to be inclined. And the more you're going to be inclined to do what? The muharramat, because you don't have the halal. So it's very important to, on the personal level, restrict yourself as best as you can. And definitely the people who are reached another level that watch intent, that have the intent, and they go to nakedness, and they go to uh, pornography and so forth, that they have reached a whole nother level of negative stimulus that reprograms their minds causes a type of addiction and will not allow them to look at the opposite sex in any kind of healthy way to the extent that some of them become so sick and so sick in the heart that even those from their own family members who are prohibited and who from your very nature you should not be inclined to that they will be inclined towards him. This is to the extent, and these are many real case scenarios that this is how this uh, pornography and things like this reprograms you as a human being and debases you and desensitizes you and hypersexualizes you as a human being. So it destroys us in many ways that we're only beginning to become aware of. So these kind of things can destroy you totally and destroy your iman in totality. They can have you leave Islam. So it's very important to be cautious of the stimulus. That's first and foremost. To strive your best to lower your gaze when you're out in public or wherever. And as far as approaching a sister and chatting. So those are two different issues. First, approaching a sister. Obviously, if you don't have a Muslim family and you don't have those kind of arrangements, which many of us don't, then you will have to have some means to meet the opposite sex, to meet uh, uh, a sister for marriage. So that may be out that you encounter. Maybe you're in the university or in school. Maybe you know brothers at the masjid you can approach or you know families and, and so on and so forth. So there's various means. And likewise, as what is common now through not just social media, but through, for example, marriage websites. That's another means. But what's very important that you maintain in all those scenarios, Islamic adab, proper mannerism. So, for example, if you're going through the Islamic websites or whatever, to meet a sister and you've put yourself out there and the sister has her wali or whatever for you to contact that you maintain that procedure that you don't go around that and you begin to chat and you guys become so friendly and you basically fall in love as young people do especially as we say they get sprung when they're young that you uh, are so into each other before the marriage and you've been alone so many times, even if you haven't touched, even if you haven't this and that and the other, but your heart's already tied. It doesn't matter at that stage. You, even if the person is leaving Islam or left Islam or doing this and doing that, you are already in it to win it because you just, your heart is already attached to that person. So these are very dangerous things. Yes, we need to have a balance of knowing one another and finding compatibility, but you have to be very careful. So no, uh, so there are various means. If you approach a sister, you see a sister in some scenario at the store, I guess, or what have you, and you say, sister, excuse me, in a proper adab, and you say, do you have a wali? This is how we used to do it in our day, okay? Because we didn't have anyone else to support us. 
uh, in order for us to marry. So the main thing is to have Islamic conduct and adab. As far as the chatting, no, you cannot chat and get involved like this. You should not speak and mix unless it's a necessity, unless there's some necessity. A necessity because you work, necessity maybe in school, a necessity because of, uh, you know, or because you're seeking marriage. You know, it should be for that actual intent. So we have to be very cautious with these matters and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.